Hello everyone, this is David. I'm doing a um, quick review of the Powered GM Cardigan from um, Gundam Build Fighters Tri. This is the 1-144 kit. Um, now, I'm just going to lead off saying that this is um, one of the more disappointing from the modern lines, actually. And I, um, the reason for that is, is that it's a lot of legacy parts. Um, this kit is based on the Powered GM um, or sorry, the the um, yeah the Power GM, I believe it is um, based on the runners from the Double O eighty three kit. Um, so it's actually it's a relatively older kit, um, and it definitely shows. The balance is um, kind of weak to say the least. Um, the poly caps and the pegs that go into them are a little loose, um, a little looser than I'd expect. And this is particularly the case because it has this custom backpack on here. Um, the custom backpack is the same thing as the um, Powered Arms Powerder that I did a brief review of the other day. Um, and it adds a bunch of functionality to it, but really the, the Powered GM wasn't made for that. Um, so it kind of shows uh, whenever you have it trying to balance straight up standard. Um, but the additions that they've put on here, the, the powered arms, um, are kind of cool. Um, these look to me like they were inspired by the Gundam Thunderbolt line. As you can see, they're a little weak. Uh, they do, they do kind of come apart whenever they're fully extended. Um, but I believe they come from um, Gund Gundam Thunderbolt, or at least they're inspired by Gundam Thunderbolt. Now, another thing that I kind of had a problem with here. As you can see, they are snapping off. That is um, that is not a good sign. Um, these pieces right here, these um, cannons on the side, they fall apart very easily whenever they're in their open state. Let me see if I can get a good shot of that. Okay, so that's the cannon. That piece just comes right off. Now the thing is, is that um, it closes and you just reverse the piece to close it. Whenever it's in its closed position, it's fine. There's no problems. But whenever it's open, this thing is very precarious. As you can see, it sort of wiggles and comes off very easily. Because it's just sort of balancing on that. Um, I can't really follow that design choice there. But whenever they're closed, it's fine. Um, I think whenever I display it, it's going to be closed. Um, which is sad because I sort of like having these things armed and outward. But Now these arms, while they do come apart a bit, um, and you know, that's not ideal, they do have snaps that hold them together, which is kind of cool. Um, whenever they're folded up, they will stay together. Um, they're practically a solid piece at that point. And... They fold just in a zigzag pattern. They've got these little tiny pegs there. But snap them into position. Um, as you can see, also, as I said, it's it's a kind of older kit, um, or at least the, the initial runners are. Um, so some of the pieces are a little difficult to put together. The seams are a little more pronounced than I would like. Um, yeah, you've got some kind of pronounced seams, um, all throughout the kit, uh, mostly on the white pieces, which are the original GM pieces. The, the yellowish pieces are all add-ons for the cardigan, um, and they're fine. They actually work really well. Um, I also will note that the cardigan pieces, um, do snap off very easily. So if you want to customize them, um, that is a wonderful thing. They, they work very well for that. Um, just like most of the Build Fighters line. Um, she comes with exactly one weapon, this sort of oozy looking thing. Um, not particularly articulate. Um, her shoulders kind of get caught on the backpacks there. Again, it's a GM. It's not, you know, it's not a red frame astray or anything like that. It's not going to give you a whole bunch range of articulation. Yeah, the, my, my biggest frustration, honestly, is the hips and legs. Um, they don't hold up the weight of the kit very well. They keep sliding out from under her. 
Um, so you basically have to find a stable pose and keep it there. Uh, that's that's not good. I don't like that. Uh, also, you can't have the legs up or anything. If you have if you have it kneeling, it's not going to be very stable. Um, another weird thing here: um, it does come with two beam sabers, um, these lovely sort of rose pink beam sabers, and they are the shoulder parts here. Um, these shoulder parts pop off um, and become the beam sabers. So you've got the beam sabers, but you only have one spare hand here. You have this spare hand, which can hold a beam saber, um, and that's the right hand. Um, the other right hand that you get is the gun hand, which has the, um, the trigger finger pointed outward. The left hand, the only left hand that you receive in this kit is the open left hand, which um, folds in. I don't, I don't know why it would do that. Um, some kits do that, but they usually have a good reason for it. Um, it folds in fully. Um, it goes outward fully. Um, you don't actually receive a hand that can hold that second beam saber. So she has um, two beam sabers, but only one hand with which to hold them. Um, that just sort of reeks to me as like lazy design. Um, the, as I said, the, the main kit, sort of cheap. Uh, I don't really know that it justified being remade without being rebuilt entirely um the gm is a very old kit um it's you know it's a classic from old gundam and throughout the years it's been updated a few times but not really that much um i mean we're talking about like you know 10 year old gun plot technology here for the most part um the build fighters parts though the powered arms the shields i like them quite a bit they're great uh, I think the face part looks nice. Um, this is unique to this kit. Um, all in all, it's okay. Um, it's not something you're going to be able to do complex posing with. I would strongly advise you pick up an action base if you want it to do anything more than just standing there. Um, if you want it in any sort of more complicated positioning. But um, it's okay. It is uh, one of the low um, notes on the Build Fighters line so far. I like the look of it. It's just not the most stable kit. I don't know if there's a story reason for that. I mean, I, the fact that it's built on a GM is the problem. Um, they, I, I kind of wish that they would have uh, re-released the GM to go along with this. Um, because they've been doing a lot of the old line stuff. They, I mean, they just did the the Air Master from Gundam X, and um, it is a minor protagonist character from a probably the least popular of all of the series. Um, but they weren't able to do the GM again, which you know is one of the essentials of the Battle of Abawaku and one of the most reprinted kits of all time. I hope she, they don't phone in her other. Uh, her other Gundam is going to be the SD winning Gundam. I don't think that there's much phoning in you can do with that. It looks like a pretty customizable SD kit, but it's an SD kit. Like, they're very sturdy. I've never had a problem with them. So I don't really think that we're going to run into any problems with it. What I'm actually really curious about is what her um, second half of the season kit is going to be. Because I know, you know, Bandai likes money. So they're going <laughs> to they're gonna give her they're gonna give her a third kit or, you know, a second imp uh, important kit. Right. Um... So I'm curious about that. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what we'll see what they do with that. But um, yeah, it's 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 not a bad kit. It's just it it's middling to low end for the Build Fighters line. Um, thank you all. If you enjoyed the video, uh, like, subscribe, comment, all of that. If you want a specific kit reviewed, let me know. I'll pick it up. Uh, we'll make that happen. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.